yes, social media. That wonderful place where we go to talk about things we love, things we enjoy, where people share compliments, good discussions. What a place to be. Does any of that sound familiar to you? Bitch, me neither. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be talking about an influencer fucking up what's new, but this time it's a little bit different because I haven't seen this level of fuck up in a long time and I just wanna talk about it. And before we get into it, I know I'm predicting right now, I'm having a That's So Raven moment where I'm like, and I know that the comments are gonna come in saying, I thought you didn't believe in cancel culture, blah, blah, blah. I don't. I'm not talking about canceling anyone in this video. I'm talking about taking accountability, looking at the situation. And if you wanna cancel the person in your books, that's fine. That's not really the actual point of the video. It's to have a discussion about things. Not that I condone any of the behaviors. So there is this influencer called Lucy Malloy. This is her. She's heavily tattooed. Her husband was a tattoo artist he had to step down from his position due to what happened, so he technically still is one, just not working at the place that he co-founded. She's an influencer that's known for being heavily tattooed, and then she also had lifestyle type content. She also has a YouTube channel that has 20,000 subscribers, or it has it now as of when I'm recording for the third fucking time because of wardrobe malfunctions. Let me just tell you, if you wear something low cut, on camera, be very careful, okay? Her Instagram now has either been deactivated or deleted. You'll understand why soon. So what happened was I actually used to follow her like a couple days ago before all this shit happened. And I came across an apology that seemingly came out of nowhere because most of the time I can predict apologies coming because so much shit surfaces that you're like, holy shit, this person's gonna make, you know, their little notepad app apology, you know, say they've changed, blah, blah. I hadn't seen anything. So I was like, what? on earth occurred for this apology, especially since it contains the term Nazi in it. So I was like, okay, this is not the typical apology of someone's tweets from 10 years ago. Most of the time, when we talk about things from 10 years ago, it's usually people tweeting either homophobic or racist things. Sometimes they overlap, but typically those are the two things I see surfacing, right? This is in a way similar, but also different because Nazism does include homophobia and racism, but it's also a whole ass ideology about a lot of other things. So, okay. We're gonna read the apology first because I want you to be as confused as I was when I read it because I was like, what the fuck is this referring to? So the apology had four slides of like the notepad app. I want to address the photos that some of you may have seen from my Facebook page when I was 16. I said some things that reading them back now make me feel sick. In 2011, a small wave of Nazi ideology swept through my hometown hardcore scene like a virus. A group of much older skinheads were grooming kids towards white supremacy and and I was one of the few who were stupid, vulnerable, and insecure about their identity enough that it caught on. For the kids in our community, the furthest this went was wearing boots and suspenders to shows and making shocking comments on MySpace and Facebook. We were called out by the people around us on the seriousness of the things we were saying and we stopped saying them. There was a period of healing and a few memorable discussions in our community and eventually faded into an unpleasant memory. In the past nine years, I've watched everyone involved grow into a politically conscious and compassionate adults. We have been horrified by the glimpses of the cultural oppression and violence that minorities black, indigenous, people of color, and especially the First Nations people of Australia experience every day. I also know from experience that white supremacy is a threat to this country because I've seen their tactics and heard them speak. These ideas don't appear in people's heads out of nowhere. Children aren't born to hate. There were and still are white supremacists who push themselves in children's lives and indoctrinate them with this garbage. Regarding the Nazi flag and clothing, I did not have a Nazi flag even though I said that I did. I don't remember if I had a Nazi singlet on under a jumper at work, but I said that I did and that is fucked up. There's no such thing as trivial racism. I'm going to leave the comments open on this post. I've taken time to think about the things you wrote and I can see that my apology did not address the hurt that I've caused or make any amends. I want to learn to be able to look back in 10 years and be more proud of the ally I became than the ignorant racist I was. I'm deeply sorry. Imagine that just coming up on your timeline with you not seeing anything and you're just like, what? Like, excuse me, the Nazi ideology? Obviously this isn't the typical influencer apology because rarely do I see people refer to themselves as Nazis, which I'm glad that she did because if that's what she was, she should use the term, the scary term, because there are a lot of people that I think kind of subscribe to Nazi ideology, but they wouldn't use the term Nazi because automatically, you know. We're gonna look into what made people aware about this ideology, but I do want to talk about a few things in this apology because first of all, if I had to grade this apology, not that it's like an apology to me at all anyway, but if I had to grade this apology as an outsider reading something based on how I think people will receive it, I don't think it's well done because a lot of this is kind of like word salad, not really referring to herself, but saying white supremacy still exists, which it's like, yeah. 
we know. You guys know I'm an English major, so I technically have been trained to rip any piece of literature, not that this is literature, but any piece of writing to shreds and be overly analytical. So like, if you think I'm reaching, perhaps, but you know, after six years of doing this, I can't unlearn that. Some people were mad because she says a hometown, like a small wave of Nazi ideology swept through the hometown. So she actually lives in Perth, Australia. That was her hometown, according to the people. They're like, it's a massive city. So it's not like you were in the middle of bumfuck nowhere and you were surrounded by people who were intolerant and were, you know, grooming you. It was like, you're in a big city and then a certain group of people were grooming you. That doesn't mean that what she's saying isn't true, but it's also like people thought it was kind of a way to make it seem more uh, excusable. <sighs> Aside from that, there are people in the comment section, now stupidly I didn't take screenshots at the time because I didn't think I was gonna talk about this because I hadn't seen the posts yet. And in the comments, there were a lot of people who were claiming to have known her when she was 18 slash 19 and they said, you were a Nazi then as well. So it wasn't just like you were 16 and stupid and you know, like you got over it real fast. Some people were making claims that it continued further and some people were making claims that her and her brother allegedly, people were scared of them because everyone was aware that they were Nazis. That's anecdotal, that's not confirmed, so you decide if you want to believe that or not. One thing I forgot, and this might seem petty, but in the apology she also says that every single person, every single person she was friends with who identified as a Nazi at the time is now like a conscientious person who's like more politically aware, blah, blah. I have to call bull on that. Like it's surreal and almost even statistically impossible in my mind that not one of those people held on to those fucked up beliefs, especially if they were already older and they already had had those beliefs for a longer time. I mean, I just, that seems like bull. Just saying. Let's go on to the posts that prompted this apology. The awkward moment when you sit under the heater at work and can't take your sweater off because you're wearing a Nazi singlet underneath. When I see posts like this, like I get it when you're 16, you make stupid choices. I understand that. I, I've been 16, crazy, right? To go to the length to admit to wearing Nazi gear or actually wearing it. And in the end, does it really change much if she was wearing it or not, if you claim to wear it? Because the level of pride seems to be pretty much similar, right? If you're proud, you'll wear it. And if you're proud, you'll talk about it and put it on social media, apparently. So to me, it doesn't even really matter. The sole concept of being that comfortable with your fucked up beliefs that you post it on Facebook and on top of that, you post it like a relatable post, like the moment when, and it's like nobody relates to that. Like Hitler relates to that maybe. I don't know who else relates to that apart from your Nazi friends. Surreal, like even at 16, I feel like most people would know that supporting an ideology that is racist and homophobic and essentially says that just because your identity is X, you deserve to die. Like I think most 16 year olds are aware that that's not an ideology you should ever adopt, especially considering World War II and how everything evolved, the millions of deaths. 16 or two years away from being an adult. Like, it's, it's really, the kid excuse here to me does not count. I'm just gonna say that. So then under a post, I don't know if it's under the same post, but it says, she says, Hitler is great. And then someone responds, he really wasn't. Lucy, stop attention seeking. We all have different views, so I accept that. Ha, I'm sorry that there has been Nazi flags in my house for over a year. It's how we are. The Hoffmans equals attention seekers for life. So she says that there were flags for over a year. That would be from when she turned 16 to 17. So when she was 17, she was ideologically identifying with being a Nazi for a year at least. So then here, there's a post, I'm assuming regarding someone's death. She says, I'm wearing a swastika t-shirt just for him. And there are a couple of other irrelevant comments. And then under that same post, she says, white pride worldwide for Chris. At the very bottom, Lucy says, last time I went in his car, he has a bend wire into a swastika hanging from his middle mirror. Is that still there? So the reason I read that out is because obviously the people she was surrounding herself with, which she admitted to, also believed the same ideology. These posts are all a massive shit show. The, the whole concept to me, like I know this might seem irrelevant in, in some ways, but to me, I, I suppose it's almost like there are different levels of extremism in the sense of, I don't think being a Nazi is less bad just because you don't have Nazi gear. That being said, to me, the concept of spending actual money on Nazi gear and being so, I guess, devoted to 
the ideology that you'd have flags in your house or have clothing items, that makes it somewhat more alarming to me because it's almost like there, there's a cognitive dissonance of you realize that what you're buying signifies essentially the bottom line is typically death. Of course, there's homophobia, like I said before, discrimination. There's, I mean, there's nothing good about being a Nazi, but it's also like you're buying gear that supports death. You're buying gear that represents, especially now after World War II, the deaths of millions of people, and you're spending money on that. Like, that blows my fucking mind. Like, I already don't understand being a Nazi, but the concept that you're so comfortable with it, to that degree. And I know in her apology, she said, oh, we didn't actually have a flag, oh, I didn't actually wear anything. It doesn't really matter at the end, because you're still claiming to have done that. So the, the level of extremism, in my opinion, is still there, because you'd be okay with it. You know, like, if you're claiming and almost boasting about it. I swear to God, out of all the influencer shit shows, this one is by far one of the most mind-boggling to me. Okay, so there are screenshots circulating of alleged DMs with her responding to her Instagram stories. I can't confirm how real any of these are, so take them with a grain of salt. But this is where it gets undeniably worse. So apparently, she was posting on her Instagram story, and she was posting people accepting her apology or people kind of like justifying her actions. So essentially on her story, she was just kind of saying, oh yeah, see, I'm right. I didn't really have to apologize. Those Instagram stories were kind of poking the bear a little bit because it's like, if you just apologized, maybe don't post your story. People telling you, no, you're right. It's okay. Everyone's a kid. And apparently everyone's a Nazi as a kid. I don't know. Fuck. I mean, also using the terminology kid when you're actually 16, I think that's a calculated way to put things because I, I'd say I was a teenager because you're two years from adulthood. You're not really a kid, you know, like you've learned about the Holocaust. You're aware of what went down in World War II. So claiming to be a kid as a way to, you know, kind of excuse this level of extreme ignorance, no. So this is one and this is one of the ones that is particularly bad. And it says, I don't care what you say, I was trying, but I guess you've proven that all black stereotypes are real. Maybe stop being so aggressive and the Nazi groups will stop. I tried to apologize, but I see I wasted my time. That's disgusting. Shame on you. The only disgusting ones are all of your people that refuse to accept a genuine apology. All of your people? I don't know if that means what I think it means because I don't know who the person who who sent it, I don't know if they're black. It seems like they probably are because she said you've proven that all black stereotypes are real. So if this is real, do I believe she's changed? <sighs> Maybe she doesn't use the term Nazi anymore, but there's racism there, clearly. Look, I'm sorry, but as a black person of color, I think it's very wrong of you to be sharing people, supporting your apology, trying to make the whole situation about yourself when it's not. Once a racist, always a racist. Instead of sharing people sucking up to you, maybe share some real useful information that will genuinely benefit the Black Lives Matter movement instead of all, oh, poor me, someone is sharing around my racist posts, send me sympathy, yikes. The person again says, still trying to play the victim, what the fuck? Lucy says, so what would you have liked me to do? I'm trying really hard here. Well, first of all, sharing these messages of support is ridiculous. This isn't about you and you don't seem to get that. Post the apology or whatever you want to do, but it's up to black people of color to decide if you want to accept it or not. You really need to educate yourself a lot. You seem very ignorant, start with, and then the link to the Black Lives Matter card. She says, I'd like to add, I wasn't racist. I was a kid and I didn't know what I was saying. If I knew, I wouldn't have posted it on Facebook. And the person says, wow, there's literally no excuse, especially not the I was a kid narrative until you experience racism, which you won't because you're white. You can't dictate what is and isn't racist. I'm done here and I won't be wasting my time anymore because clearly speaking over black people of color is your thing. Just to add, putting racist in quotation marks like that is so, so out of line. Like I said, I can't confirm those screenshots are real, but the way in which all of this was managed was a disaster. Like aside from the fact that it seems like if these are real, the racism is still actively there. It's also like, if you're posting an apology and in the fucking apology, you say, sorry, for a previous apology, I didn't get to see that one, but apparently it was terrible and apparently it was like a copy and paste of something her husband had said. But if you're gonna post an apology and say, I'm gonna leave this up so I can listen to what you guys are saying, whatever, why are you arguing with anyone? If you're letting people say their piece, just let them say their piece. And usually arguing with someone to still defend yourself after your apology, not a good look, really truly not, because then it seems like the apology is just performative, which who knows, maybe it is. I don't know if you would have posted this if nobody found the Facebook stuff. And then there's another screenshot, which if this one's real, and it's six years ago, which makes it worse as well, because it would technically confirm that she was potentially 19, like the people in the comments were saying. But anyway, so it says, at least he managed to kill as many humans as he did before he died. 
Stick to your goals. Yeah, Hitler. Even if none of these screenshots are real, which who knows, the apology to me was a mess. The fact that there had to be two apologies made because the first one was bad. <sighs> and then the fact of saying, oh yeah, I'm gonna leave this up and then deactivating your Instagram or deleting it kind of goes against your whole message. And then it seems like you're more hypocritical still. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. You can let me know if someone can come back from being a Nazi. And this is one line of thought that I had and then I'm gonna shut the fuck up, I promise. If you have internalized an ideology for at least a year, we have at least a year confirmed, if the last screenshot is real, then it's three years, if not more, because those are just like the posts we have. Who knows what hasn't been posted or what's been deleted. I don't know how having a few important conversations like what she was saying in her apology, when you're indoctrinated or when you're deeply inserted into an ideology to the point that it's a very pervasive factor in your life, it's hard for me to believe that you can just kind of drop that. Now that's not to say that within 10 years or like six years, you can't change your ideology. Yes, sure, maybe. It's also like, I don't think you can act like it's zero to a hundred where it's like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, Hitler. And then 10 minutes later, you have a hard conversation. You're like, oh no, I have made a mistake. I have abandoned all those beliefs. You know what I mean? So it's also like a question of like what the healing time is there or like what the transition time is there. And I don't know what it is and I can't say because it's different for everyone. But I think that's the aspect that's troubling to a lot of people is that, you know, this wasn't one edgy, stupid joke tweet that you did to shock people. This was like years of your life that you actively choosing to hang out with people who thought that way, even, you know, past potentially an adulthood in terms of like turning 18. I don't know if you can come back, come back from something like that. I truly don't know. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.